it's about branding today, right? Yep. What it yeah. takes to build a brand. Exactly. And I think because um, obviously all three sort of alongside our personal brand, quote unquote, we all have a business that um, really gets augmented by by branding. Um, I think, for example, if you look at you, Erwin, you primarily help uh, female fashion store, larger female fashion mm-hmm. stores, scale to that next level. And I think what you you guys have done really, really well is um, you've positioned yourself as the go-to guys for the female fashion niche. And I think that is what differentiate you as well from all these other agencies because it's quite a popular niche, right? Like it's quite a, I wouldn't say saturated, but it's the, there's a lot of competition that are trying to go for that for top sure. spot. And I think you guys are firmly at the top because of the brand and around it. I think in general, it's like you need to ask yourself is, and I think it's more important question to everyone. It's like, what, what is the number one brand in the world you look up to? So I think that would start. I don't know what's yours, Grené. Yes, um, my number one brand is obvious, of course. It's, uh, it's Android. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Apple. Yeah, yeah. yeah yours? I was probably going to say Apple as well, yeah. yeah. You see, like, I think if, based on the, the answer you give there, I think it will literally point you towards a little bit like what type of market you're going to put yourself out there as well because yeah. of course both of you say apple and if you look okay what does apple do well of course it's an upper segment but it's quality you know it's like yeah. the whole thing around it yeah and you're always going to take pieces of that put it into yeah. your own company like without you knowing it yeah i think that's why it's super important that you do realize yourself that because then you can take elements of that yeah yeah that's a good point actually yeah i think what apple do very well is they portray like a specific lifestyle mm-hmm. of everything is much easier with apple um and yeah, like I said, if you can incorporate that into your own business, if that's the avenue you want to go down, then um, I definitely think you've got like a strong, uh, you can create a strong presence online. Exactly. Because yeah. like ultimately, yeah, branding, it, it takes you so far. Yeah. Because you, you can take any company in the world and you can separate the product from the brand. And quite often, the brand is the reason why something works. Yeah. 100%. You know, it's like there's also, there's such a big price factor tied into brand, yeah. which is, it's crazy. You know, the perfect example I always say is like, look at Laura Piana. Like you're legit paying four, five, six, seven thousand for a merino wool sweater. But because it's Laura Piana cotton, mm-hmm. you know, it's Laura yeah. Piana owned by Louis Vuitton and Hennessy. It's like all of a sudden it's like acceptable to do so. Yeah, so you're really not really buying into the product, but you're all buying into the brand. That's what yeah. you're paying your, your top dollar for. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and if it's if you cycle back a little bit, if you look to your own business, and a lot of customers I speak, to, they actually don't know what branding really is. No. Oh. And and I think the only thing with branding is its consistency. If you look at Apple, where we start with, they have for years the same logo. The only change they did was make it from colorful logo yeah. to uh, more a, a plain white or uh, now on the MacBook it's more black, but it's always the same logo. And what I also see funny with customers I speak, they every year they update their website styles. They use different colors on their website. Every lunch, the it's email, a different color. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, always different fonts. It's not consistent and they get bored with their own design and that's what's to go wrong. If you just pick one design and go for it with for years, then you build a brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, a brand is more than only a logo. I, I, uh, don't correct yeah. me wrong, but I think that's so important. If you want, if you are consistent in your language, in your in identity, then it's possible to build a brand. But if you change it every time, and I know how hard it is. I built up my Immersify. I also try different logos and I said, okay, I, I paid a premium price for a logo. So I forced myself never do another logo again because it was quite pricey. And I, okay, now I paid a big price for this logo and now I use it for years. And I think that's maybe mm. important to do. I mean, yeah. I would recommend anyone, like, I think it's more of like if you're like a clothing lifestyle-ish, you know, it's like you can legit go to the website of, of Virgil, RIP the, the GOAT, and he yeah. basically tells you exactly how you start a brand, like exactly what he did to build Off-White, what he did to, you know, become the creative director of Louis Vuitton and think, there's so many valuable things in there that a lot of people legit should just have a look at that. Yeah. They should already solve a whole lot. Because yeah, it's like, and what, what Corne says as well, like stick stick to what you're building out there. It's not like because you were a yellow logo and now you're a red logo that mysteriously, you know, it's like, oh, whoa. You know, it's like something is going to happen. Like, no, yeah. it's ultimately the, the, the product is how you then change it. Obviously, maybe 
you know, you evolve. Like if you started the company 10 years ago when you were 18, now you're, I don't know, 28. It might be that you evolved yourself. But then there also the question then asked is like, did the customers evolve with you? Or are you still targeting that new 18 year old? Because yeah. I see a lot of people making that mistake there that they think that the clientele grew with them. So yeah. that what they're going through in their lives, what the client also going through. And yeah. nine out of 10 yeah. times, it is not the case. No, I think the one out of 10 is JK Rowling, right? With the Harry Potter books. The first book yeah. was obviously quite childish. And the reason why the longer the series goes on, the more in depth and the more grim it gets is because the reader of the original Harry Potter book yeah. obviously grew up yeah. alongside those books. So that's obviously sort of the, the one out of mm. 10 that is is actually evolving exactly. alongside uh, the brand. And I think the, the best example is, is Entourage, because I love the series, but the movie is absolutely God, garbage. Movie's awful, yeah. The it's movie is absolutely <laughs> dreadful. And it's because of that, because they didn't realize is that the people who used to watch the series, like they're now way older yeah. and they tried to go back to it. No. Yeah, it's not no, the that, same. That's, that doesn't work. And, and that's especially for larger brands. But if you're just starting, yes, keep doing it for years because yeah. you never grow a brand in a few months or overnight. That's, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. Then you're not a real brand. Yeah. And a real brand is recognized by a lot of people and that takes a lot of time to achieve yeah. that. I mean, I but think it's, this whole problem could be easy, have been fixed if, you know, uh, Steve Jobs would have still been here. If he would have just released a book with his th his thoughts about branding, yeah, that would be a very interesting read for every entrepreneur in the world. Yeah, yes. So have you guys read his autobiography? I haven't. I only I listened to the uh, the audio book. Yeah, just quickly skimmed through it. But yeah. yeah, I haven't like the physical book. I've never. Yeah, I have the physical book, and to be uh, I never read it. I've read it cover to cover. Okay. It's, yeah. it's definitely a good read. Uh, he has a lot of insights because he was such a perfectionist, right? Yeah, he is. Like, yeah, he wanted was, yeah. every Apple store to be identical. Like even the angle of the laptops at which they're opened needs to be a specific angle. Why? So it's an awkward, so the, the laptop angles are, it's, it's, it's too far open, basically. Why did they, why did they do that? Is so people, when they want to test it, they'll change the angle to the, screen, the angle yeah. that they'll just so screen smart. so that, you know, it's better for them. By doing that, they've touched the product and they'll have more of an affinity with it because they felt yeah. it physically. Mm -hmm. The things like that is what he used to think about, which I thought was, it's, it's, it's yeah. beyond what the average guy would think about, right? Like if you, at least I would never th think of, uh, you know, having like a specific, I think it was like 78 degrees or something like that. I'll never even think of, of like the, 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 the screen angle and how that can impact a potential purchase. Yes, but he, with he, he was, of course, quite amazing in all that kind of thing. He, he was a visionary. He saw all that kind of thing. It was so yeah. important for for for. for, for it was branding. like years, light years ahead. 100%. Yes, light years ahead. Yes, but also he was super consistent. He never yeah. uh, accepted the logo change, for example. No. And, 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 he and never deviated from the main goal. No. Like the main course always stayed the same. Even the original font. Now it's now changed with Apple, the new Apple building. They use, for, I think, a new a new font on their, on, uh, where is it spelled Apple. But before on the old campus, they uh, the 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 original uh, Apple Sharif font was I think they yeah. used it for for ten, ten decades. They used the same font on the, yeah. on also, and even I got sometimes a letter from Apple, and it was also sometimes not the colored logo on it. That's the, 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 the old yeah, the, the old, old logo, logo yeah, was yeah. for fun I think, but yeah. yes, but it was always the same. Yeah, another fun fact about uh, Apple as well and Steve Jobs is with the iPhone four the he he created the the outside of the iphone 4 before the 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 whole internal machine was was created so what it was going to look like he already had in his mind and he already basically got prototypes of and then the team said what you want in this iphone 4 will never fit in you know such a small device and he basically said well we're not going to release it until it fits and then you know lo and behold eventually it did actually fit because we have you know the iphone 4 um, but that's how much he prioritized the brand. He said that he didn't want like an additional, uh, you know, um, he didn't want the option for people to replace the battery and stuff like that. Like he, he really wanted the brand to be on point and he said everything else is secondary, yeah. which uh, I thought was really interesting. But as direct response marketers, which we all are, um, how important is having a brand like as, as, as a client, you know, for the success of the, of the business when you're running ads, how important is it for them to actually have a brand? For me, it com more comes down to product. Cause I think it's like, um, people always talk down obviously on dropshippers, but dropshipping works. It's well alive. Yeah, product 2000, fit. Yeah. It's all about if 
ultimately the person with the <coughs> brand is gonna win long term. Yeah. But I think from a short term game perspective, it all comes down to who has the best product market fit. Like if you are, you know, the Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy with the product, but your creative is trash, your website is trash, whatever, you could go and step on their toes, take the better creative, take the better yeah. item, you will in the short term you will win. Yeah. Long term yeah. brand will win. So I think for a marketing perspective, ultimately product is gonna be number one. Yeah. And then I think brand kind of evolves from that. Now obviously if you do already have the brand, it's just easier to scale it's a up. Win -win, yeah. yeah. Because it's like there is that commitment out there in the market that you are legit. Yeah, I agree. I think it's interesting as well because as marketers, we focus on the short term because we're not going to be here in like 10 years, at least not working with that specific brand, unless of course the relationship is really, really good. Exactly. Realistically speaking, we're not going to be with that client for, you know, in 10 years time. So when we run ads, we focus on the direct response, immediate ROI, you know, retargeting people that are on the verge of purchasing, trying to get in as many prospects as possible. Um, but that's not always in line with the long-term vision of the brand. Exactly. And obviously that's a very interesting conversation that we can have quite often with clients. I mean, it's, you know, it all depends on how people, you know, look at it. I, know I must admit, if, if I look across the board, like the people who seem to say to a certain extent, they don't mind as much how the ads look like, all they care about performance, they always win. Yeah. Like, if you look 100%. at ROAS, if you look at CPA levels, yeah. if you look just in overall growth of a business, they are winning pretty hard compared to those who care more about numbers and uh, yeah. more like about from a design perspective. Yeah, I agree. And I think there is going to come a point in time where I kind of feel like we're already there because I do see that like, if I look at big, uh, big retailers, so for example, today, Neiman Marcus has like a 25% of friends and family sale. It is kind of concluding for me that they are struggling and they yeah. have realized they a little bit missed the boat because they do not have that lever anymore of, hey, look at us, we are the Newman markets, we are the Herod, et cetera. Yeah. You know, because like there are just clever people out there behind their laptops who do know, understand the game, who are more than happy to throw heavy money at it because they know from exactly. A to Z how the business looks like, which is super crucial that you do know that A to Z because then that's what, what it makes yeah, work. Yeah, sometimes of course a brand is important, but it's also something like you say, oh, a little bit overrated. I see too many small entrepreneurs focusing too much on their identity. Of course, it's yeah. good to have one, of course, mm -hmm. and, and to keep consistent. That's, and I think if you keep consistent, then you have never changed as you make it once and never change again. And maybe in 10 years, you you improve it. So don't waste any second of time to it. But mm -hmm. they do, they're changing their templates every week. They're changing this and that, and it never helps sales. It mostly hurts sales. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's important to, to keep consistent and have, of course, the right product. That's, yeah. that's even more important. Because brand always, it comes with time as well. Yep. You know, like yep. evolve the product, focus on a product. If your product is good, people love your product, the brand will be there. It will be established. Yeah. And then from there, like once you have it established, it becomes it even more important to stay consistent because any mishap there or any deviation of the brand is going to hurt you so hard. I think a perfect example is, is like, you know, for example, uh, what happened with Bud Light? Thing with Kid Rock, you know, you know, it's like it will come and it will haunt you. Yeah. Yes. So yes. Yeah. Alongside consistency, then, what what other factor do you guys think is uh, is very important when when building the brand? I mean, obviously, knowing your your target customer, like uh, you need to know who the brand is going to be part of. Like, obviously, it's going to be something that's attached in their life. Because so if it's a piece of clothing, they will go out and go out in the public wear yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. they need to be to a certain extent, like proud or satisfied to go and walk walk around. And then you need to know that if you know that connection, then it's just way easier to make sure that are you in, in line. Because if you go and do your photo shoot, if you go and launch your next collection, yeah, you can keep that in the back of your mind and also make sure it stays com like from a brand perspective. And I think that's where Apple is, is so good at, is that they know exactly who basically is gonna take that product and make yeah. it part of their life. Yeah. Yeah. It, yes, and what you're saying, if you are, uh, write a few things down. What is your what's your dream customer? And focus only on that. Yeah. And and don't overcomplicate it. Exactly. And I see so many photo shoots from customers. They they create. They spend thousands of dollars on photo shoots, and I sometimes he never. They are never used because they are in the wrong, uh, uh, not in portrait mode, or uh, yeah. the, the the wrong image size, mm -hmm. or they're not 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 the right products. Uh, we talked about this before from sometimes. I sometimes see with fashion brands, they the most popular product they forget on the shoot. 
<laughs> yeah, it's always the same. Like they do a photo shoot, wow. and then like the, the best seller is item A, and then yeah. the first asking you question, oh boom, what did you shoot of item A? You say, well, we didn't bring that because yeah. you know that's not part of the new collection. Yeah, and then you know it's like yeah, um, you know it's, you can't even answer that at this point anymore. Yeah. Oh uh, uh, yes, that that's really weird always to me. And and uh, and to keep it simple, uh, just as you're starting and. Uh, and for sure, if you're uh, doing one or uh, less than one million dollars a year in revenue, keep it as simple as possible. Keep it authentic, yeah. be consistent, but keep it simple. Don't and overcomplicate for yourself. Do your photo shoots just with the latest iPhone, for yeah. example. Stay, yeah. make stay it. true to yourself. Yeah. I think that's what really this is all about. And you can give so many examples of companies who did and who didn't. Perfect example: Jim Shark. When they started, obviously first, you know, it was men's clothing, but they very quickly realized, okay, female is where the game is at. Leggings, all they did, leggings, 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 V1, V2, V3, V4. What's your core product? Make it the best it is. And that is then basically going to become your identity. I see too many people, they do one launch, they get successful selling, I don't know, t-shirts, and all of a sudden they become a denim brand. Boom, they also need to sell shoes. They also need to sell bags. They also need to sell hats. Like, don't do this. Like. St- Focused yeah, yeah, on yeah, your yeah. core business. Yeah, focus and don't and not too many products. Don't add too many products. It's, exactly. it's, it's a nightmare for your stock management. You have always the, the wrong item on stock. So yes, yeah, so keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, it's the 80-20 principle, right? Yeah. We, we always yeah. talk about, you know, like 80% of the sales will come from 20% of the products. So if you just focus on the best sellers and go all in on that, you know, that will push the business forward rather than trying to push out as many new products as possible and have these new releases, you know, every three, four weeks. Yeah, and then content-wise, it'll be easier as well because you can ju- you just know what to focus on, and you can reuse that content yeah. over and over again because it's consistently the best seller. Yeah, maybe we can uh, finish this episode with maybe some quick uh, actions they can do to start. If you know have a small shop or brand and you want to, yes, give bring it to the next step. I mean, I think it's really what we've been talking about. I think this whole episode is if you go back to like let's say the drawing board, if you have your normal one selling item. You go and let's say you run ads with it and it doesn't work. You also need to ask yourself, okay, maybe the problem is not the ads. Yeah. And think a lot of people, uh, maybe they have not, they have like too much of an ego to accept this, but you need to realize there as well, if you do not have product market fit, don't force it. There's a reason why you don't have product market fit. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to go really and look for that very quickly. Yeah. Like obviously you can have a, a nice month, maybe two months where it does well, but good marketing does not fix a bad product. Yeah. Whereas yeah. a good product can work with bad marketing. Yes, yes. I think it's important to, um, if you're just starting, also ask your customer, even if you have only three, three yeah. customers, just send them an email. Don't make it overcomplicated. Just send them an email from your own account. Make it personal, no automation, no difficult software. Just exactly. and ask them in one sentence, give me some feedback. And and, and what and it's, will be, you will be surprised how many good feedback you get. Of course, for me, because exactly. also, Feedback, but not will help, but the most of them will help. Yeah. And if, what I see, if we do it also for other customers, sometimes we only select 100 customers and not too much. S- send them by hand the email, and then we get 25 responses. That's quite amazing. And that's uh, always, uh, uh, always two or three responses with super great insights. Yeah. From a perspective that mostly the business owner never thought on. Yeah, I would just say I would just do a survey always, like send them a question, like you. Legit can ask the, uh, the customers like, what other brand would you have considered buying from? Uh, what newspaper do you read? Or what influence do you look up with? You know, like- Yes, it's, it's, yes you can even add that at the, at the checkout process. After they bought, you can yeah. just end, uh, they ask maybe three questions they can fill in. That can also give some insights, but also just mail or call your customers. Give them a call and exactly. send them a Or send, send them a text message. They will be surprised that they get a personal text message. and give you a lot of insights and what you if you make it personal they will also you will also be treated like a person and not like yeah an exactly automated questionnaire where people exactly. uh, have the feeling that they talk with a computer and uh, make it personal yeah. yeah and that's also maybe my last tip for brands make it as personal as possible yeah i mean it's like always it's cliche you know i think that's the best way probably to end this people always like to do business with people they don't want to do business with a business yeah, I agree. And the bigger the business gets, the bigger business becomes with business and the less it becomes business with people. Yeah. Yes. I think as well, just to, to wrap things up, I think content is something that uh, we obviously we've discussed during this podcast with the photo shoots, etc. But I think it's so, so important to have content out there to be top of mind. 
you know, whether it's uh, e com store, whether it's your personal brand, whether it's a new launch, a new project, or something that you're working on, you need to push that out there. And you can do that with paid traffic, of course, but I think alongside the paid traffic, you can, like, paid traffic will boost what organically is already working. Yeah. So if you push out organic content, you know, whether that is YouTube, uh, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest, you know, whatever works for your brand or your product, and then augment it with Facebook ads, I think that's, uh, or with ads in general, that's uh, a winning combination. Yes, yes, and and use the content you created. I'm so surprised. I have customers did photo shoots for last collection, not the current collection, and never put it on their website. They sent it to me to do it in the email marketing. Maybe use a handful of pictures of it, and the thousand pictures in the Google Drive never just sitting there used. Yeah. Never, I saw them never on their socials. I saw them never on their website, and I don't understand why you pay thousands of dollars for a photo shoot if you don't use it. Just use it. Even if it's maybe the picture for you is not perfect, the, the customer won't see that. No, that's it. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's to wrap it up. It's consistency in content, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And exactly. Per- and be personal. Okay, thanks. <laughs>